uh, tank. Question number one. When your cargo tank has baffles, what handling effect do you expect? Handling effect. Um, there will be less side-to-side -side search or less front-to-back search or more slow search than quick search. Baffles, those are uh, special uh, separations um, inside of the tank and they separate uh, uh, the tank into different compartments from front to back and that's why they would uh, uh, and, um, and they also have holes inside um, of them. Uh, but uh, uh, the purpose of baffles is to prevent uh, front to back search because again baffles they separate uh, the tank into uh, several compartments from front to back and they prevent uh, front to back search of the fluids of the liquids inside so the uh, uh, right answer is B they prevent front to back you just need to know what the baffles are Question number two, if you are driving a tanker and uh, need to steer quickly to avoid a hazard, you, what you need to do if you need to steer quickly while driving tanker? Um, uh, definitely the right answer is uh, B, you should not apply the brakes while turning, common sense. Uh, it applies uh, to the case when you drive uh, any vehicle. If you need to steer quickly, avoid uh, applying brakes while turning. Uh, okay, it's uh, again uh, it applies to any uh, vehicle and especially to the uh, tank vehicle. Okay, number three, which of these? is the best way to take a curve again you all you need to remember uh, is uh, that um, tanker tank vehicle is uh, well more difficult to um, operate and uh, that's uh, <clears throat> why the answer is a you need to slow to the safe speed before entering and then accelerate slightly through the curve uh, what uh, can help you to find the right answer here is the word before. Everything needs to be done before. Yeah, we know this from general knowledge. Yeah, it's the same logic uh, which you used uh, uh, answering general knowledge, any other uh, set of questions. Okay, before entering and then accelerate slightly. Question number four. Holding liquids in tankers requires special care, special care for two reasons. Mm -hmm. One reason is given, uh, one reason is uh, uh, blank center of gravity. What kind of center of gravity the tank vehicle has? It has high center of gravity. Okay, one of the reasons why tankers require special care is the high center of gravity. Again, it's obvious. You cannot distribute the, the liquid close to the ground. Okay, and uh, the center of uh, uh, gravity in tank vehicle always will be high. Okay, empty trucks. Uh, you need to complete the statement. What empty trucks can do? or uh, what the characteristic they require greater stopping distance than full ones you see this question even uh, will ask you not about the tank just uh, about the, the general consideration and uh, you should be familiar with this answer from general knowledge section empty trucks require greater stopping distance than full ones because uh, on empty trucks they are not pressed to the ground and you cannot use the power of braking of brake system and suspension system mm -hmm. uh, empty trucks greater so always pay attention to our keywords question number six an emergency forces an emergency forces you to stop your tanker quickly or crash you should what should you do if you have to stop otherwise you would crash definitely you need to use controlled or step braking again 
uh, uh, you're probably familiar with uh, this uh, answer from general knowledge section, from air brake section, from combination vehicle section. It also applies here. <clears throat> Whenever you are in an emergency situation, use controlled or stab braking to prevent uh, your wheels to be locked. Mm -hmm. And keep on a straight line. Yep. Question number seven. Side to side search can cause, again obvious, what could cause side to side from side to side rollover? Mm -hmm. It starts rocking your vehicle from side to side and uh, it could be easily turned over. Mm -hmm. Question number eight. You should be extremely cautious when driving smooth bore tanks without baffles, without any separations inside. Uh -huh. So you have to be extremely cautious when driving smooth bore tanks, especially when you are right answer is starting or stopping you need to remember that if you have the well your tank uh, without baffles without um, bulk hats smooth tank you should be extremely cautious well any time definitely but especially when starting or stopping the vehicle good question number nine you are driving a tanker truck and the front wheels begin to skid. Which of these is most likely to occur? Uh, question, uh, right answer is A. Uh, you will continue in a straight line and keep moving forward no matter how much you steer. Again, uh, this applies to any vehicle and definitely applies to tanker vehicle, to tanker truck. If it starts, it's, if it begins to skid, you will continue in a straight line and keep moving forward. Doesn't matter how much you would steer. Okay? Straight line. Uh, if it goes into the skid. Question number 10. You are driving on a clear night. You must dim your headlights from high to low. You should adjust your speed so that you can stop within the distance you can see ahead. Again, this question applies to any <coughs> vehicle. Uh, it's uh, common sense. Um, if you need to adjust your speed, definitely <coughs> uh, you need to adjust it in, in the way so you can see in the distance. Uh, you can stop in the distance you can see ahead. Okay. Question number 11. You should know the outage needed for the liquids you carry because, because the right answer is um, uh, C, some liquids expand more than others when they get warm. Just remember, outage, that's uh, how the, well, different uh, fluids, liquids expand uh, when they get warm and uh, definitely obviously some liquids expand more some liquids expand less that's why you need to know uh, the outage uh, and that's one of the reason why the tank should not be filled completely uh -huh. because if they expand uh, when they get warm well mm, you would be in problem so some liquids expand more and that's what outage is question number 12 when should the driver of a tanker uh, that has lost its brakes use a truck escape ramp obviously always and not only a tanker driver but any vehicle driver you should use if you lose your brakes power you should use escape ramp always question number 13 if an oncoming vehicle drifts into your lane, you should, what should you do? Move to your right. Again, uh, these questions, uh, you answer this question in general notes section, in any other sections. The safest uh, um, way uh, to do in this situation is move to your right. Question number 14. Which of these statements about stopping distance and speed is true? Okay, you need to read, uh, well, all given options. But the right answer, 
uh, is uh, <coughs> uh, C, wet rods can double stopping distance at any speed. Uh, in these particular questions, you need to pay attention to each given uh, option. Uh, total stopping distance is how far you will travel after the brakes are applied. No, total stopping distance uh, uh, is uh, not what I said. It's, uh, uh, <clears throat> it's longer than that. Uh, because after the, uh, you apply the brakes, it's uh, just effective braking distance. If you uh, increase the speed from, 40, from 20 to 40, uh, uh, the stopping distance uh, will be four times longer. And that's why we are left with only one option. Wet rods can double stopping distance at any speed. You may just uh, memorize this fact that on the wet rods, uh, stopping distance at any speed is doubled. Question 15. Traffic emergency requires you to escape to the shoulder or roadside. If possible, cause down to how many miles per hour before using your brakes? Again, familiar question, 20 miles per hour. If possible, you should try to cause down to 20 miles per hour to decrease your speed to 20 miles per hour before using the brakes. Mm -hmm. Question number 16. When you load <clears throat> the small tanks or a cargo tank equipped with bulk heads, you should check your distribution. Okay, again, remember, bulk heads and buffles, those are two types of equipment which are used to separate the inside of the, your tank. <clears throat> buffles, they do have holes and the fluid circulates through them. Bulk heads do not have holes. So with bulk heads, you need to pay particular attention to weight distribution. Because again, a fluid inside of the tank <clears throat> is prevented to circulate freely. Question is 17. Buffles in liquid cargo tanks do not usually prevent what kind of surge? Uh, side to side search. Again, both buffles and bulkheads they prevent front to back search, but they are not able to prevent side to side search. Mm -hmm. And side to side search, well, may rock the vehicle, the, the tank, and uh, cause the rollover. Question 18 What does liquid surge do to the handling of a tanker surge handling of a tanker it makes it roll easier we just discussed this it makes it roll easy uh, 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 question is not no, correct we're gonna get back to this question it can move the truck in the direction the liquids waves move okay good example uh, uh you uh, i mean uh we answer it uh, wrong so the program advice us no correct answer is c um the uh, liquid surge can move the truck in the direction the liquid waves move. Question number 19. The best way to take a curve is to slow to safe speed before entering the curve and then do what? As you go through it, accelerate. That's the, um, well, proved uh, safest way to go through the curves. You slow before and then accelerate slightly as you go through it. Question 20. You are driving on a clear night with your low beam lights on. If your headlights let you see about 250 feet ahead of you, you should adjust your speed so that you can stop within about how many feet? Okay, guys, 250, definitely. If you see within 250 feet, definitely, the answer is 250. <clears throat> Which of these statements about emergency steering is true? Uh, three given options, and again, you need to go through all of them. Uh, quick steering movement should only be done with the wheels locked wrong. You never do anything with the wheels locked. You simply wouldn't be able to operate. 
if an oncoming driver drifts into your lane, a move to your right may be the best. That's a good answer. And you can almost always stop more quickly than you can turn. Also wrong, because you can al almost always can turn more quickly than to stop. Again, that's the only option which is uh, mm, logical and it is correct. If an incoming driver drifts into your lane, move to your right may be the best. Question number 22. Holding liquids in tank vehicles requires special care for two reasons. One of the reasons is uh, liquid movement. There was another question and uh, um, uh, about uh, one reason. That's the second reason. So special care is required because of movement of the liquid, which, by the way, has a high center of gravity. Mm -hmm. Not extreme weight, not an even expansion, even though they do play a role in, uh, well, special care. But uh, uh, most important reason is movement of the liquid. Question number 23. How would you expect a truck with a buffled cargo tank to handle on the road? Again, remind you, buffled, that's uh, the tank uh, with, uh, uh, well, uh, separations inside. And how it is, uh, well, to handle uh, on the road? Uh, there will be less front-to-back surge than there is in tanks without baffles, which makes, uh, well, your job a little bit easier. It's, uh, well, handle it uh, uh, more uh, confidently. Okay, so baffled cargo tank, there will be less front-to-back surge than there is in tanks without baffles. Question number 24. Except when you loading or unloading cargo tank, the liquid discharge valve should be always, of course, should be closed. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to be a specialist in the liquid handling. Uh, you just uh, apply, again, common sense. If you're not loading or unloading, what the uh, discharge valve should be always closed. Question number 25. Which of the statement about tank vehicle is true? Again, you need to read all of them. Fully loaded tank vehicle take longer to stop than empty. Oh, probably wrong. We already know that empty vehicle requires longer stopping distance, right? Uh, B, you should use only the emergency brakes to stop. Well, there is no such a brakes as an emergency brakes. Um, and uh, emergency system, yes, but not the brakes. And C, the posted speed for a curve may be too fast for a tank vehicle. That's it is. Uh, for you as a tanker um, driver, um, the, the posted speed on a road on a curve may be too fast for you because again tank vehicles are more prone to roll over because of fluid uh, uh, of so liquid slow fluid down five slow ten miles slow down okay because the posted do not trust the posted speed limit when you drive a tank vehicle question number 26 when transporting tanker you should inspect the cargo within the first how many miles of the trip? Um, well, good question. You need just to, to know that. 50 miles, 50 miles uh, uh, after the beginning of the trip, you should stop and uh, do a walk around inspection and uh, uh, well, check um, your vehicle. Okay, after 50 miles. Question number 27. Before loading or unloading, before the tanker, the first thing you should do is, the first thing is uh, uh, inspect the vehicle. Before loading or unloading, again, that's the common sense. Before doing something, what you need to do to make sure everything is correct, inspect the vehicle. And then secure all the, uh, well, all the parts. Question number 28. When inspecting the pipes, connections, and hoses for leaks, pay special attention to 
Well, definitely pay special attention to joints. You are expecting connections, the other word joints, so that's what you need to pay special attention to. Mm -hmm. Synonyms, connections, joints. Question number 29. Portable tanks are. What are portable tanks? Uh, <clears throat> uh, not allow it to carry loads that are more than uh, uh, 1,000 gallons. No, the answer is wrong. Uh -huh. uh, that's a good example of how tricky those questions could be, even they might be, <clears throat> uh, well, uh, seem uh, easy. Portable tanks are called portables because they are attached to the vehicle. And uh, how many gallons uh, is, uh, well, not important. The characteristic of a portable tanks are uh, that they can only be loaded. Mm -hmm. Okay, bulk containers which are not permanently attached. Mm -hmm. That's what you need to pay attention to. So, portable tanks uh, are called portable because they are not permanently attached. Okay, we'll, we'll return to this question and talk about it again. Question number 30. Vehicle skids are often caused by... Okay, we know that driving too fast. It applies to any type of vehicle. Okay, easy. Question number 31. If you steer tank vehicle too quickly while braking, never do that. But if you do, what's going to happen? Make your vehicle to roll over. Again, it could happen with any type of vehicle, especially dangerous could be with the tank vehicle. If you steer and brakes, wow, make the vehicle to roll over. Question number 32. Which of the statement about emergency steering and tankers is true? Uh, well, again, we need to read all of them. Tanker easier to come to steer than most of the vehicle. Wrong. We already agreed that tanker is more difficult to come to steer. Uh, when making quick steering movement, do not apply the brakes. That could be a case, uh, my right answer. Let's read the third one. The clutch should be depressed before making a quick steering movement. No, that doesn't make any sense. So the right answer is B. When making quick steering movement, do not apply to the brakes. Okay, let's see. Good. Do not apply to the brakes when steering. Question number 33. Baffled liquid tanks have bulk heads. Uh, you need to complete the statement. So, the bulk heads... Uh, <clears throat> that separate the liquids from different areas of the tanks. Again, you need to remember the principal difference between the baffles and bulk heads. Uh, both of them prevent front-to-back surge, not side-to-side. -side. But both of them separate uh, um, <clears throat> the liquid from different areas of the tanks. And uh, the difference that baffles they do have holes, bulk heads do not. So, baffled liquids, the right answer to this question would be B, that separate the liquids from different areas of the tanks. Again, bulk heads, they do not have holes. That flow through them. Uh -huh. So, uh, we'll try uh, to read it again, this question. Let's see. That was, there were 33 questions, and we uh, made three mistakes. Well, we still passed, but let's go through the questions with wrong answer, which is recommended for you to do anytime. Uh, uh, what does liquid surge do to the handling of a tanker? Okay, we answer it first. Uh, I answer it. It makes it roll easier. Now we remember that the right answer is um, C in this case. It can move the truck in the direction the liquid waves move. And as a result of that, it makes it roll easier. Okay, good. 
Now, 29, that's only also the question we made a mistake. And portable tanks, again, remember, guys, uh, how many gallons you can uh, uh, hold doesn't uh, matter. What is important, that portable tanks, those are containers which are not permanently attached to the trucks. You could load them attached uh, or not attached, but uh, they are not permanently attached. And question 33, uh, now you probably remember the difference between baffled and bulk heads. Baffled li liquid tanks, they Mm, uh, th those are bulkheads with the holes in them that let liquid fluid well, to circulate flow through them mm -hmm, and uh, uh, make uh, um, weight distribution more even. Okay, good. Now, uh, well, we got 100%, and now you can get back to uh, main menu and do all questions again, or repeat again the wrong answer question, okay? Thank you so much, and good luck.